Hi and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's Game Boy Emulator Development Series. In the previous video we covered working on HRAM uh, and the working RAM. In this video we're going to be focused on jumping around. That is, all the instructions related to jumping the program counter to another location. So let's get started. So first if we want to look at the uh, instructions that are going to be involved here Let's see, that's going to be the RST instructions, or RET, sorry, the RET instructions. RST moves to really specific locations. Call, let's see, um, the JR, jump relative, and JP to uh, a, a normal jump. And in order to accomplish this, we need to do a stack, which has also instructions uh, for push and pop. So uh, let's get started with building the stack operations, and we're going to create a new file for that. Uh, hold on. So we'll have a stack.c and a stack.h. So we start with our pragma once, <clears throat> and we're going to include the common. That's probably all that we need to include for the stack. So. So we're going to have a couple operations. We'll have the stack push to push eight uh, bits of data. And then let's say uh, stack push 16 to push 16 bit data. OK. And now we'll have a stack pop and a stack pop 16. So. That's all we'll need to implement for the actual stack functions. So let's go to our stack.c and we'll include our stack.h. Okay, I'm just going to paste in these and then we can implement each one of them. Okay. Alright, so starting with stack push, what we want to do is get the, uh, we actually want to make the call to this CPU get regs function, which will be in CPU.h, so let's go ahead and implement that. Let's see, we'll put that in, or actually, is that already implemented? CPU, nope, it's not. Okay, so we're going to implement the CPU get regs in which we just want to return the registers for the CPU. Alright, so I'm going to copy that and we'll do that in, let's see, CPU util. Alright, scroll down to the bottom. And really all we want to do is return ctx.regs. And actually that's a pointer so I return the address of it. All right, let me close this now. And so we needed cpu.getreg so we can get the stack pointer. So we're gonna set uh, stack pointer minus minus and let's include bus.h as well. So if we're going to push, then we're going to do a bus write to the current stack pointer. So we'll say CPU get regs SP data. So we're writing uh, to the stack pointer to the current data. And now if we're going to push 16, we're essentially just going to do push the top uh, uh, the top byte of this 16-bit uh, data and then the bottom byte of that 16-bit data. And now for stack pop, let's see. So again, we're going to take that and we'll plus plus instead of minus minus. Oh, hold on. Actually, we want to return a bus read that stack pointer plus plus. 
So that will return a bus read at the stack pointer and then increment it. And now a stack pop, we're going to pop the high and the low for a stack pop 16. And then we're going to uh, return high shifted over by 8 or with low. Okay, so that should cover those stack functions. And actually, I think I'm, I'm going to kind of, if you're not familiar with how a stack actually works, I'll put some comments here at the top that kind of walks through how a stack works. All right, so let's take a look at our stack memory. First of all, the stack pointer is set to the bottom of the uh, working RAM. So DFFF, that's usually done via a load call. So that's our current working RAM, just the top part of it. If we want to do a push 0x55, the first thing we do is stack pointer minus minus, which sets it down 1 to DFFE. And now we set that value to 55 in memory. So now we have at DFFE, the value is 55, and that's where the stack pointer points. So if we want to now push another value, 77, we again do the same. And now we're setting that DFFD memory locations value to 77. So now let's say we do a pop. And we want to pop the, the uh, top off the stack. So we're going to say get the value of that memory location which returns 0x77 and now we increment the stack pointer. So now it's DFFE and you'll see the value DFFD is still there. That's fine because now if we push another value we again decrease the stack pointer position and set that memory value to 88. So that 77 value is no longer valid because it was popped off the stack. And now our stack pointer is back pointing to that 88 value. Hope that makes sense. So let's move back on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement these pop and push instructions because these are these are called separately from those the other instructions that will actually use the stack as well so let me go down here into our into our uh, CPU proc dot C let's see and I'll just start with a proc pop and a proc push Okay, so and I'll add them down here as well in pop and in push equals proc pop and proc push. So for popping the value, I'm going to first grab the, uh, the low value, increment the cycles and grab the high value and these pop and push function uh, instructions are only for 16-bit values so that's why we're always going to do it for uh, reading both values so just like the other places we've done this we or the high byte moved over 8 with the low byte and now we're going to set the register that's related to this so for uh, if we're popping into BC, then we're going to set the value BC to that end, that value that we popped. So now let's see if register one is actually AF. There's a little bit different behavior. So in that case, we're going to set reg. Let's see current instruction reg one. We're only going to grab that uh, bottom th uh, three nibbles, I guess you'd call it, one byte and half byte. Okay. And now for push, it's kind of just the opposite. We're going to read that register. Shift 
shift it over by eight and it with that uh, first bite so we grab the first bite of it increment our cycles Now we're going to call our stack push method to push that value. And then the same thing with the low, but we don't want to shift it over because it's just the low byte. All right. Yep, and there we go. We do want to make sure we end it with FF. And then we increment our cycles again. And let's see. Yeah, I think that pretty much does it for push and pop. So now we can move on to the other instructions which are related to moving. But first, oh, actually, let's uh, go ahead and add this to our instructions array. So let's see, we have. Uh, C1 is in pop. Addressing mode is implied. Um, yeah, I think so. And register type is BC. Okay, now we can copy and paste this into D1 and E1 and F1. And now we can do the same thing for the push. That one is going to be C5. E5. Oh, do we miss one? Yeah, D5. And F5. So let's try to make this. Make. Okay, everything built correctly. Looks like I'm missing a header. So we can easily add that to CPU proc. Okay, there we go. So it builds fine. And now let's just um, let's just move on to the next uh, instructions we want to implement. So we go down here, and we have the jump, and jump uh, has this check condition already. What I'm going to do is add kind of a generic jump called go to adder. It's going to take the C uh, CPU context and a 16-bit address and a boolean flag for whether or not we need to push the program counter. So let's see. What this is going to do first is actually it's going to do the same thing as this jump is doing. And let's see. So if the condition is met as well, and the push PC flag is set, then we want to push the current program counter, which we can do with stack push 16. X.PC. Let's see where I go. See, and we need to add some e uh, emulator cycles for that. It's going to be two because it's 16 bit address. So two cycles, one for each uh, byte that it's writing. Okay. So now that we have our go to adder, we can use that in most of these other instructions, <clears throat> in starting with the uh, proc JP actually. So let's update the proc JP so that it uses the go to address function. So we're simply going to select the whole contents of this function. Actually copy go to adder. And um, 
Let's replace it with go. Actually, let me leave that there to make sure that I have it right. So go to adder, ctx. Then we pass in ctx fetch data as the address, and false because our JP does not push the program counter. Now I can remove that. Okay, so that's our our jump. That's our regular jump instruction. So now let's take a look at call. So the call instruction actually does need to push the current program counter. And since it's pushing the program counter, we need we can use the same function except we pass true for that. So proc call and let's set this to true. And let's look at our next instruction is going to be, let's see, paste that and we'll say JR, which is jump relative. Okay, and that's going to be similar to JP. However, we have this relative value, which we're casting to char because it's a U16 for the fetch data, but we want to grab that first byte cast it to a char because it might be negative. You might want to jump back a few values. So now we'll do the adder is regs.pc plus rel. So that could be plus a positive or plus a negative. And we can take that address and pass that into go to adder. Okay, now let's put these in our array. So in JR equals proc JR, in call equals proc call. Okay, so now let's go and add them to our instructions list. So there's several different ones of these, so I'm going to kind of just zip through these. Let's see, we, we, we can start with call. Let's see, C4 and D4. So we go to here, C4, in call. Let's see, addressing mode, D16. Register type none, register type none, and let's see. And then, and then the uh, check type is not zero for that one, NZ. And the D5 is going to be in C. So then we have C, D, or no, C, C, and D, C. Is going to be Z. And D, C is going to be C. And then we have the jump always is CD. And that one we can just remove all this. Make that CD. And that does call. Now let's look at JR. JR has pretty much the same situations. Let's see, it's starting with 2-0. JR AM R no D eight and check type is N Z and then for three zero check type is N C and let's see we have two eight or one eight, let's start with one eight. That one has no checks. 28 is Z. 38 is C. Okay, back and let's try to build this. Everything built fine. So let's go back and look at the next one. Jump. 
There's a jump. We need to add all the jumps as well. Let's see. We'll start with C2. Is that C012? Yeah. So this is going to be NJP. Make sure that's C2. And D2 is going to be in C. I'm going to do D3. Okay, actually, let's just jump down to CA is Z. And DA is going to be check type C. Okay, that's condition type, not check type. And let's see, E9 is going to be a special case where we use the memory, the data at memory uh, location pointed to by HL. And I think that covers us. So now RET is when you're returning from a call. So the RET instruction is going to be pretty similar to call but in reverse. Let's go to... Alright, let's just add a new function here. I'll just copy this one. Or maybe I want to go up here. Yeah, I'll copy proc jp to start with and call this ret. Okay, so we're going to start with first checking if the current instructions condition is not ct none, then we need to add a CM, an EMU cycle. Now we'll run check condition. So if the condition is met, that means we need to do our return call. So first we're going to pop the first value off the stack and come in our cycles. Now you'd think maybe I could do pop 16, but in order to keep the cycle accurate, I need to actually pop each individual one off and increment the cycles. You know, it would work, but there's some games that might not behave fully properly if, if you don't follow the cycle accuracy. So now we set our program counter back to that and increment our uh, EMU cycles. And let's see. Yeah, we can get rid of this there. So in proc ret and proc ret i is very similar, very similar, but it's returning from an interrupt. And the only difference, I'm actually just going to invoke proc ret, and then I'm going to, or actually before it, I'm going to let's see, ctx int master enabled equals true. So I'm going to re-enable the uh, master interrupt enabled flag. So let's go ahead and add this. In ret equals proc ret. In ret i equals proc ret i. Now let's go through and quickly add these back to our instructions uh, file. See, we have C0 is ret, and Z C and D0 is ret and C. C what we got here. C8 is C and D8 is Z or C, sorry. 
and that should be our, we have the uh, ret i there as well and our plain ret instruction too so our plain ret instruction is c9 and our d9 is our ret i Okay, now let's see what other ones do we need to add. Let's see, oh yeah, actually first let's go back to this go to adder. I missed something there. That PC should be adder. So, alright, I'm removing some debug stuff I added before. So I'm going to remake and here you see it's been doing these push and pop calls we had a red a call a push a call a pop two pushes and then it ended on two three okay let's see two three is increment hl okay in which we haven't implemented yet, so that's correct. Let's try a couple other. Let's try the Tetris ROM and see what it does. And that one stops it. Decrement, which we haven't implemented yet. Let's try the DMG Acid. That one stops at CB. That's right. We we still need to implement that instruction as well. Okay, so. Let's go back and add one more of these. RST. So this is kind of like an interrupt. It jumps directly to a specific location. RST 0 jumps to 0. 30 jumps to 30. 0, 08 jumps to 0, 08, etc. So we're actually going to take those. This is where we're going we're to use that parameter field. We're actually going to take that 0, 0 and make that a parameter and the 3, 0 and make that a parameter. So let's start by just copying proc call. So that is going to be proc RST because RST, let's see, we take the fetched data. Instead of fetched data, it's going to be the param, which we're going to set up when we add it to our instructions.c. And it does need to push this the uh, program counter so we'll add this here RST is RST and go to our instructions and this is where we need to go back and add all these individual RST items so that's C7 to F7 and CF to FF Alright, so I'm just going to kind of zip through this here really quickly. Started at C7. You can see we're kind of getting close to getting all these filled out. We're at least more than halfway through all these instructions. A lot of the ones that are left are very much related, other than a few really small ones. Let's see, C7... Let me look back at this instruction. Okay, after condition we have param, so that looks right. So you can see we're adding 0, 0 as the param at the end on C7. And on CF, 0, 8 is going to be the param at the end. D7, 10, DF, 18. Then we have E7, 20, EF, 28, F7, 30, and FF, 38. And let's just do another make and make sure that it still runs. Uh, that, one, oh, that one stops at CB, that's right. Try another one. Tetris and yeah, there. 
yeah I think we've hit the the limits of uh, what we can do on this video with all the different jumping and pushing and stuff like that so I think we're at a good stopping point and and the next video will cover the increment and decrement and uh, then we'll move on to things like adding and or anding and oring and adding and, and all that other stuff so hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it if you have any input please join the discord and uh, let me know I am trying to fix the audio issues by kind of boosting the audio at the after uh, recording it so let me know if that's all working out correctly for you and everything you can do it in the comments on the video um, and remember to like and subscribe and the bell notification and all that and thanks for watching